Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Karen Wolf with Karen B. Wolf Interiors out of beautiful Short Hills, New Jersey. Been in house since 2013, 13 times best of house winner, over 100,000 saves of your work, amazing stuff, 1,000 followers. This time we're going to look at a home very personal to you, and you finally got to sort of build your dream home here. This is a really special one. My family and I have been going to Long Beach Island since I was a young child. And then I took my kids there when they were babies. And so it has a really soft spot in my heart. Um, it's very easy to get to. We call it down the shore in New Jersey. So we go down the shore. So Long Beach Island is one of the shore locations that you can go to. And what I love about it is that you actually go over a little bridge to get there and you feel like you're truly in, an, in more of a, a retreat or an escape, kind of like going to the Keys to Florida LBI is to the Jersey shore. So this is a getaway. This is a vacation spot. You want it to just, you want to go, ah, when you get there and just feel good. Give me the vibe for the whole, you know, the aesthetic overall, what you were going for and what we're going to see in this home. A spa, open, relaxed, comfortable feel to the house at a high end level. It was turnkey. So when my family came to move in, literally everything was in the closets. Beds were made. You know, we selected the best mattresses, the best bedding, the most comfortable experience that you could possibly have that was still aspirational, but relatable at the same time. Why don't Thank we start you. with the beautiful kitchen, the floors? I mean, there's so much here, the beams, everything that you've done here. Walk me through, let's start in the kitchen. Just walk me through what you did here, some of your big choices and how it worked. So with my project, as with most projects, I start from the ground up. That is our always our rule of thumb. Um, even if I was just doing a bedroom, I would start with the rug. In this instance, we were building a house. It was new construction. So we started with our flooring. And I went for a wide plank, hand-scraped white oak floor that was pre-finished. And it's character grade, so it's not the most expensive. You can see that it has like markings in it. As a whole, I think it just adds to the character of the house and it makes you feel like when you come in with sandy feet, that's okay. Overall feel of the color was light and airy and in the natural tones that so many people are going for today it reminded me of the sand. All right, so let's go through. Tell me about the kitchen a little bit. Tell me about your island and your paint colors and look at those beautiful lights. Those are big, beautiful lights over the island there too. Thank you. So the kitchen, um, one of the key decisions we made was to put the sink in the island. That way, when you are cooking or entertaining, you're not, your back isn't to your entire you know, family. The other major decision that I made was I moved to porcelain in this house because the porcelain um, gives you a wider range of color choice. It's just as durable. And I started on the perimeter with a wood porcelain color that brought the flooring up to the counter level. And that was like my aha moment for this kitchen. And then from there, I then used Laza porcelain. They're both from Sapien Stone. That's for the island and has like a really dreamy kind of wave movement to it. And then I built up the porcelain. All porcelain has to be mitered. So it gives you that like that really crisp edge, which was really nice for a beach house. Then I did the island in a custom Sherwin-Williams blue color. Bliss, I think it was blissful blue. I used the blissful blue behind the cabinetry in the open glass so that it popped one more time into the kitchen. And then in the backsplash, I brought the, the blues back in with a glass um, chevron that basically is easy to clean. Glass is a great material for a beach house because you could just wipe it down. And the other thing that I did was I put the hood and the oven in an area where you can notice that this, this L has no windows. So I put it off to the side so that when you come up the stairs, it's a focal point and you can see the hood. The other thing is I overscaled my lighting over the island in those big giant clear glass pendants. I'm a huge fan of overscaled lighting. I think lighting in general is what defines a house. In many of my projects, you'll see that we have a lot of detailed consideration when it comes to lighting and how it plays off and you know, basically how they all relate to each other in addition to the room. There's like four different lights in that whole squared space that we had to get all four to balance each other and work. Tell me about the beams throughout the space. Really pretty. Thank you. So having trusses, especially in that open family room, was one of my major wish list items. And the ceiling was a great, you know, lended itself greatly to that. We ended up basically hiring a faux finisher that mirrored the flooring to the beams 
and then faux finish the beams so that we could get the look of the floor up there. Otherwise the staining, because it's a different material, it's pine and the floors are oak. In the ceiling trusses, it's a really long span. So it's much harder to get long pieces of oak like that. And I, I do want to comment one other thing on the, the millwork. You know, we get a lot of questions from our clients, shiplap, is it done? Is it over? Is it going to look to 2020, 2010? I mean, obviously I just built this house and I put shiplap everywhere. I feel like shiplap is like subway tile. Um, it's, it's become a namesake. It's not going anywhere. And it will, I think it has longevity. It may look, you know, it might be like, okay, that was done in 2010 through 2020, but in a beach house for sure, you can use shiplap. Yeah, it's timeless. And I think in a beach house, you get, you kind of get away with a lot of different things too, right? Because it's, it's obviously like a personal thing. It's probably going to stay in the family. You're not even concerned about resale. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'm going to flip this thing. It's just like your personal getaway, beautiful thing. So I love the ship lap. I think it looks awesome. What a great space. So, so give me a feel for it. So there's the kitchen. The kitchen sort of looks out towards the water. How close to the water are you here? A block in from the water. So you actually don't see the water unless you go to the rooftop. The kitchen looks into the dining room and into a, you know, an open space, great room. And then what I did was I wove that blue color of the island into the great room space. And I custom matched the blue. There's a console table behind a sofa um, that's linen wrapped. I custom matched and did a custom blue linen wrapped console table to carry that through. And then brought the blue back in again in the two custom tie dye chairs which um, it's Kravit fabric, but I had the chairs made for the space. Yeah, that's really cool. I love those chairs. So tell me about the fireplace in the family room. So the fireplace in the family room is a concrete um, encaustic style tile from Riyadh tile. And you know, we have a lot going on in there, even though it's very open and airy, had a lot of pattern and color to balance. So I went with a very subtle pattern in a light gray um, that I felt would be timeless and, you know, just enough punch basically to pull everything together. Love that. Tell me about your artwork and your approach to the artwork in the space. Cause there's, there's nice pieces kind of sprinkled throughout, but they, they're not, they're not drawing attention to themselves so much. I'm so happy you asked about that because I love, love curating art for this beach house. I used a local artist named Carrie Walsh and First, I wanted, I wanted a leaf. So we basically did a Montserrat leaf over that really rustic console on the left side. And then I was looking for just a tonal, a tonal piece of abstract art that could pull all the colors through. And that's those are the two pieces flanking the window. In the kitchen area, that's a Benson Cobb piece that I bought at one of the trade shows a while back. And I had been holding it for a couple of years. I bought it for me personally. And I finally had a spot for it. It's perfect. And I'm a huge fan of Benson Cobb's work. It looks like a custom piece. Looks like you commissioned it for the space. It's crazy. Right. That piece. So that piece was not commissioned, but the other two or three were commissioned. And then in the Lanai room, I used a piece of artwork from Carrie Rosenthal, who is, she is known for her like happy abstract art. Her piece I've owned for, for a little while and finally had a spot for it in this beach house. It looks perfect over the bar with the bright blue stools. In the Lanai room, the art was a little bit more outdoor in, so to say. You know, I really wanted to reflect like what the room is. So I used dimensional paper art over the console table. And then there's photography. We haven't we hadn't used any photography throughout the house. So this was a perfect spot for that. And again, just like with color and textures, you're balancing art as well. You know, you've got a variety of different things. You've got two separate shelves. How do you attack something like that? Shelves are tough, even for designers. I have to be honest with you. Um, it's a lot of trial and error, and a lot of it is about scale. Usually I try to pick a color story. So in this instance, I went with like neutrals, you know, like white to cream to brown or beige, let's call it. So I went with sandy colors. And then I obviously was sticking with my, my story for the home, which was a texture story. So I was balancing texture and more of an organic feel to the product. And then um, from there, then you're mixing in the, I usually group in vignettes of three. So you'll notice like lots of sets of three of something. The more white space, the better in a shelf. Um, you know, our tendency is to want to fill it up, fill it up. But we actually put a lot of things on the shelf and then we 
took it off, took it off, took it off. For this this house, I mean, functionally, the shelves probably could get loaded with games and other things, but I decided I really wanted to use it as a secondary element to add an art, an art and vibe to the home. That's a great space. So let's go into another space, which is really beautiful bedroom space here. So we really went for a tonal material story in the master bedroom. It's about layering of natural materials and comfort again in this space. I started with the canopy bed, which we luckily had the, you know, the ceiling height to do. Basically, it's a bed, a little walkway and a dresser and then room for a little bench and then the bathroom. But because of the high ceiling and because of the the four poster bed, the canopy style bed, we were able, it brings the room up and makes the room feel bigger than it actually is. So the rug is, is a jute and the wallpaper is a uh, grass cloth. It's a highly textured grass, grass cloth. And what I liked about it is a lot of the natural grass cloths have a very yellow or green undertone because they're natural. This one has a whiteness to it that I hadn't seen before. It's from Romo and it was, you know, surprisingly light and airy. It felt like it felt like a different style grass cloth than I've seen. In the dresser, we did a dimensional diamond cut dresser, which is from, I think it's from Bernhardt. I'm almost positive. We carried that like dimensional feel over with obviously the rug is textured and nubby. Um, we layered more dimension into the bed and the whole material story in the space. It is my parents' special space. So I really wanted it to make it, I really wanted it to feel like my mom, cool lady, my dad too, but my mom in general. <laughs> how cool How cool is that to design something special for your parents like that? Is that the first time you did that for them? It is. And my, my parents walked in, they were like, oh my God, we've never had something like this done for us in our lives. They were, they were just shell shocked and it was the nicest feeling. I, they, they, must, they must be so proud of you. I mean, they're, they're like, oh, it's our daughter. Look what she's done. Oh, she did this for us. I mean, how cool is that? What a great feeling. Yeah. It was really special. And you know what? They stayed out of it. They really gave me free reign. They said, we're going to trust you. My mom and I met maybe two times to go over her room. And I just think it's really cool that you did that for your parents. Um, really lucky. And uh, they should be super proud of you, obviously. And many more years of great client success to you. Wow. Thank you so much. And and thank you, House, um, for giving me the opportunity to showcase my house, but also to be on house and to gain these amazing clients. It's been it's been a really great almost 10 year ride at this point. Absolutely. And uh, here's to another 10. Thank you. All right. Take care. See you. Bye.